Ladies and gentlemen, this uh, hearing will come to order. And um, hopefully there will be some senators who arrive. But you got the two best ones right here. <laughs> Let me make my statement. Americans take the safety of their aviation system uh, for granted, and they should, given that all too often air travel is a difficult experience. Safety is the last thing passengers need to worry about. There are certain expectations built into modern air travel. Airline passengers expect their pilot is experienced and rested, that their aircraft has been properly maintained, and that air traffic controllers will guide their planes safely through the skies. But the industry and regulators should never take the safety of the system for granted, nor should we. I know that none of us in this room take it for granted. Everyone here today is deeply committed to aviation safety. That's the job of many of you and the interest of all of us. Our strong aviation record did not happen overnight. Everyone involved has worked hard to cultivate a strong safety culture. The FAA, the aircraft manufacturers, and airline employees all hold safety as their number one priority, as do we. Congress has spent a considerable amount of time in the last few years strengthening the FAA, really battling to strengthen it financially and substantively. It was not easy, but we got it done. And the aviation system would become even safer because of the FAA Modernization and Reform Act that we did, in fact, pass last year, and the Airline Safety Act, which we did, in fact, pass in 2010. As you are well aware, our goal was to make certain our aviation system continues to be the safest, most efficient, and modern in the world. The FAA has made considerable progress implementing many of the safety initiatives uh, in those bills, and the agency is to be commended for that effort. But now all of the progress that the FAA has made is at risk. Sequestration is not our friend and it's affecting every aspect of the FAA's operations or perceived operations as people try to figure out what's going to happen. I also share my colleagues' frustration with the lack of transparency, frankly, on how the agency made this decision and how it intends to implement uh, budget cuts. A great deal of attention has been placed on the potential closure of 149 air traffic control towers, including four in West Virginia. I've expressed my concerns about the impact of closing those towers on the airports and the communities. They've expressed their concern to me, clearly. I know my colleagues share these concerns, and we will likely be discussing that um, today. But again, there is frustration from some of us about the lack of transparency on how the agency made this decision, how it intends to implement generally the budget cuts. We need to have a better understanding of the specifics. What I do know is that if we fail to reverse the decrease in FAA's budget, we will not have an aviation system that we need to compete in a global economy. I, I made that speech last week, and I'll probably make it again today. Why is it that we are so directly destroying our infrastructure and our possibilities of, of growth and modernization? It's, it, it's incomprehensible, but there it is. The hard choices that the FAA has to make to implement the sequester will only be magnified this October, when the next fiscal year begins. I know that the agency will never sacrifice safety, but it will be forced to limit every aspect of the system's operations. The implementation of NextGen will be delayed. That's awful and dangerous, but it's going to be delayed. Our aerospace industry will suffer as certification of new technology and equipment is slowed. More towers could be forced to close, and critical safety rulemaking such as pilot training and qualification standards will take 
longer. One of the reasons I have so aggressively advocated for moving to a digital satellite-based system with the NextGen program is that it will make this system safer. I know that the FAA will never compromise safety, but the erosion of FAA's budget directly impacts our ability to compete next, complete NextGen and other safety initiatives. Something has to give somewhere. Our problem is we don't know what that's going to be. It threatens our ability to make the continuous improvement to aviation safety um, that we have made since the Wright brothers. Unlike other transportation systems, we have a comprehensive plan to move our aviation system into the 21st century. But our unwillingness to raise sufficient revenues to pay for it means that we will fall further and further behind. You fight, 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 like we did last year and the year before, to move ahead. A bill passes, just barely, you get ahead. And then all of a sudden, we're falling behind. We face difficult budgetary situations. We need to make the necessary investments in our transportation networks. I don't think anybody would dispute that. But is it happening? No. Is there a possibility of this happening? Maybe, but not likely. The United States has been the world's aviation leader for over 100 years. We risk the, that global leadership position if we're unwilling to continue to invest in it. And you can't invest in something with goodwill, good wishes. It's called revenue. It's called money. The situation with the lithium battery on the Boeing 787 is a perfect example of where the regulators identified and acted swiftly to address a serious safety problem. The company and the FAA are evaluating solutions that I hope will so soon be proven uh, workable. Although the situation with the Boeing 787 has dominated the news, the FAA is currently working uh, with the aviation community to actively identify and address potential risks before they result in an accident. The agency is working with controllers and pilots to increase reporting of errors so we can learn from our mistakes. We're putting the future safety of the system at risk. If we're unwilling to sustain our commitment, if we are in that condition, that we are not willing to sustain our commitment to these critical effects. Everyone agrees that these are vital programs, that they will directly improve the safety of the system. Do we really want to slow down these initiatives? I'm not willing to settle for the status quo on aviation safety. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll have to. It's a terrible situation. I will seek to maintain the necessary level of funding for the FAA and its critical missions as we continue our efforts to address our broader fiscal issues. I appreciate the budgetary situation is forcing the federal government to make difficult choices, but those choices still must be smart, driven by good policy, and not damage our long-term economic competitiveness. It's a continued commitment to safety that makes the U.S. aviation system the safest in the world. We've seen that in recent months. Safety has to come above all else. There is no number two. There's only number one. And I'm confident somehow, for what reason I can't explain, that this is going to continue. 